Hey, what's up? It's Wick for Wikimedia Tutorials, and today I'm going to take a look at the Studer A800, which is a uh, UAD-powered plugin by Universal Audio. It's an emulation of uh, what our uh, recording would sound like if we had it recorded on the Studer. There's a lot of people uh, still arguing uh, between the sound of digital recordings and uh, recordings that we do on tape, and this is uh, one of the things that will get you pretty close to sounding like tape with a digital recording. The plugin is recommended to be used on as many tracks in your project as uh, where you want the tape sound on. Well, in a lot of cases that would probably be on all of your uh, individual tracks, which is uh, giving it that overall saturation of tape. You could also use it on the group tracks or on stereo mixes as well if you desire. So let's take a look at all the functions that we can find on this plugin. So down here in the bottom we can find our input gain, which goes from uh, minus 12 dB up to plus 24 dB on the input stage. Besides that, we've got the ins per second, or uh, IPS control, which allows us to set the speed of the tape machine. Tape machines are known to have a head bump, or low frequency shift, which means that it will boost the lower frequencies when they are being recorded on tape. And this uh, head bump is a little bit different for the 15, 30 and the 7.5 inch per second tape speeds. 15 inch per second is really known for its musical type of sound, whereas 30 is used for classical recordings a lot. So we will see the 15 a lot on uh, pop and rock productions. 7.5 sounds a lot more dull and a lot more dark, which we'll see in a second. Turning the IPS control to off will basically bypass the tape functions of this plugin. With the tape control we can select up to four different types of tape. Each tape has its own uh, frequency variation, a little bit of different distortion and tape compression characters. On the right we can find the calibration. The lower the cal level for each uh, tape formula, the higher the signal level required to reach distortion and saturation of that tape. So it actually sets the tape and the flux level without disturbing the unity gain of this plugin. If tape noise is activated, this noise floor is also affected by the cal level. This here is a list of the recommended cal settings and tape formulas. The VU meter is a visual representation of the signal's level after the tape. It's good to know that this plugin operates at an internal level of minus 12 dB on the full digital scale. So usually when the dB meter is peaking quite high it means that we're adding some saturation and harmonic distortion. The path select buttons uh, allow us to uh, change the signal path active in the studer. The first one, the true option, is a bypass control, which uh, basically allows us to completely bypass the tape. The input mode emulates the sound of the studer when it only goes through the machine electronics, so it doesn't add any of the tape sound. The sync mode emulates the sound of direct recording and playback over the sync and record head, so it's not using the playback head, but it does use all the corresponding machine electronics. The Repro, the Reproduction mode, actually models the sound of recording through the record head and playback through the playback head, plus all the corresponding electronics of the device. So this would most likely give you the most accurate form or representation of recording on tape. And finally, for the main controls, we've got the output level in the right corner here, which allows us to attenuate or gain the output level. If we click on the text open or on the Studer logo, we can see the secondary controls which are under the hood. On the right we can select if we want to add tape noise to this recording. Tape noise can give a little bit of a character to a song, but I found out that when I uh, do it on all the tracks, on all the tape machines, I get a very audible tape noise in, uh, in the final mix down. If you plan to add tape noise to your song or to your tracks, try to not do it on all the tracks before it gets really audible. On the left of that we've got the equalizer buttons, and these determine the active EQ values and the frequency of the hum noise as well. These are available for the 7.5 and the 15 inch speeds. When the tape speed is set to 30 ips, neither of these values is available because the EQ is fixed with the AES curve. When it's set to NAB, the hum noise frequency is 60 Hz, which is uh, common in the United States. And when set to CCIR, the hum noise frequency is 50 Hz, which is common in Euroland. The Studer has some individual parameters for the bias and the EQs, and normally we want to calibrate whenever we change the tape type or the tape speed. Whenever we uh, select Auto Cal or the Automatic Calibration, the plugin uses these calibration controls and automatically adjusts them whenever we change the tape type or the tape speed. 
So when we turn the auto cal off, it means that it does not automatically change the values whenever we change the tape type or the tape speed. On the right of that, we'll find the gang controls. And this allows us to change all the instances of this Studer plugin in our project. So when we select the gang control to be on, everything that will change from the tape speed or the input level or the tape type will be reflected on all the instances that we have of this plugin. On the left, we'll find the EQ controls. The left HF or high frequency driver is before the tape. It offers a high frequency boost with the HF knob and it allows us to change the bias. It's the only EQ before the tape and we'll, we'll listen to it in a minute. Then we'll find the two EQs for the sync and the repro, both respectively changing the frequency content of the playback method that we've selected. So we can change the high frequency and the low frequency content of the signals coming from either the record head or the reproduction head. And last but not least, we've got the noise controls, which allows us to dial in the tape hiss and the hum. This of course only works when we have the noise selected to on. So let's take a listen at how this studer sounds in a project. So here I've got my Cubase uh, project loaded up and on the majority of the tracks I've loaded up the studer plugin and uh, that's just a regular mono version here on the two kick drums I've got uh, a studer on the snares and on the overheads as well and I've routed all these tracks to a group track on which I've inserted a stereo version of the studer as well. I'm going to make sure that these gang controls are on, so if I'm going to do anything, it's going to affect all the versions of the Studer that I've got running in my project. So let's take a listen at how this, uh, this already sounds. There's a huge difference uh, when we turn on the Studer and when we have it in bypass. You can really hear that difference. Um, one of the things you'll, uh, you'll, you'll notice is that I've uh, got quite a lot of boost on the input here. Uh, I can't do that because I've got quite a lot of headroom on these recordings left here. If I, I can even enlarge that a little bit so you can see. I've got quite some headroom left, so altogether uh, I, I didn't do any mixing on this. I just did a little bit of leveling to make sure that I don't get any clipping on the output, and that's just it. So it's just the Studer running on these drums, and you can really hear that effect. And now it's currently running at a 15 inch per second tape speeds. Let's uh, take a listen at all the different tape speeds that we've got. Starting at 7.5, which sounds a lot darker. When you're listening to this on decent headphones, you'll hear a huge difference in the kick drum because of the low end. Uh, there's a, a head bump in that really low punchy end and that is uh, an octave different for 15 or 30 and for 7.5, that's why the 7.5 sounds really dark. Um, the 15 is used a lot for uh, well pop and rock recordings while the 7.5 sounds a lot darker. So I, I think it would be more suitable for blues and maybe some punk type type of song which could use that little bit of extra edge. Hear the difference in the hi-hat. And the 30 is really bright so sometimes you just gotta tweak a little bit with the EQ. I'm gonna take a look at these EQs. The first one is just a general EQ and you can see here we've got these two bands and this is really the high frequency and the bias control can be really helpful. Let's overdrive the input a little bit, put it on 7.5, change the tape formula and plus 9 for calibration is what, uh, what they suggest I think for this uh, type of tape. If the bias is uh, around here, you can hear some really distinct clipping going on. In 
increasing the bias will generate some more tape compression rather than that real uh, distorted sound. But you can hear it's a lot more compressed. Same goes when we lower that bias value. Um, when we uh, are at the 30 ips, you can hear it's really starting to distort in the higher region. Increasing this will push it more into that tape compression and it will be less distorted and a little bit more compressed. The really cool thing is that uh, you see here that we're changing actually the tape formula right now is that we could do some things that we can't do in real life. I could have the kick drum uh, be recorded on this tape while I do the snares on this type of tape and the overheads on this type of tape. Obviously I got to make sure that these gang controls are turned off and that I do that for each track individually. But I can do some really magnificent stuff that I really can't do with a with the studer uh, without you know that would be a lot of pain and effort to well manage to do something like that in real life. So it's really cool. One of the tricks people do to get some more saturation is uh, take down the output level a little bit and increase the input. That way we get more distortion and more saturation of the of the tape machine. Let's do it for all plugins that are running. For a more gentle approach, we just decrease the input. So you can really hear what this can do with your sound. I'm going to use uh, this on some instrumental tracks as well quite soon in the mixing series that I'm doing here on YouTube. This is just uh, an overview of the plugin and tried it on drums, but I'm going to be implementing this on some, uh, on some musical things as well quite soon. Let's take a listen at the noise. Let me turn on this, uh, this noise right here and increase it all the way. This is the level control for that hiss. That is literally what it's adding. It's really adding that tape hiss. So that's something you don't want on all the tracks all of the time. So you gotta beware of that because it's really adding noise. Same goes for the hum. I can totally increase that and can actually hear we've got two frequencies we got 50 and 60 Hertz hum depending if you're in the States or in Europe you got a different type of frequency for your hum as well so that's a that's a cool thing that they actually implemented that I'm gonna turn it off for now that's something you don't always want um, if I'm gonna turn on this auto cal you can see if I change my formulas uh, and my tape settings you can see that the the frequency shifts actually go along with something that they suggest that should be more calibrated towards the tape speed that we're going for. So if we turn this on, we basically get like an auto calibration for the EQ setting, depending on the tape speed that we set and the tape formula combination of these two. So that can be a real helpful tool, depending on uh, if you want to tweak it yourself or want to want to look for something that they suggest. So uh, overall, I really love the Studer plugin. You could already hear what it does with the signal even if it's just boosting a little bit it's still giving that harmonic saturation I personally like this 450 speed uh, tape on the uh, on the drums I could do uh, with a little bit less hi-hat, but that's more a volume thing, so I'm not, I'm not going to be leveling right now in this uh, in this tutorial. So I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this tutorial about the Studer. I think it's a wonderful plugin. You should check out some of my other videos where I'm doing more of these UAD plugins as well. And um, check out some of my other mixing and, uh, and other tutorials that I'm doing here on YouTube. And I hope to see you guys soon. Peace.